That's better. There's seagulls living on my roof. Come on, Rachel. Shh, seagulls. Shh, now. Let's go. Hello, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to be starting another series, which is quite exciting. In this series, there's gonna be five videos all about starting the conversation. These five topics include how we initiate the conversation, who we should or can talk to, when the right time is, what we should expect, and what happens when the response isn't helpful, or perhaps even negative. It's only when we find out how to start the conversation that we can eradicate this stigma. So today, I'm gonna to take you through some steps that I have personally done and have found really helpful when initiating a conversation about mental health. It's so important when you're struggling to know that you're not on your own and that sharing your experiences with other people will lessen the blow. It will get easier with time, as all things do, but it's just initiating it. It's difficult, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable, I get it. I've been there, I'm still struggling with it now. However, like, bleh, it feels when you go to start it, it will never trump the feelings that you are struggling with at the time. And it's never really as bad as we expect it to be. I think it's really easy to think that people are gonna respond negatively, that they won't help, perhaps they'll walk away and leave you. And that's a prime example of how our minds can overreact and almost like create this really bad scenario before it's even happened. Also, it's really important to think about it from the other person's perspective. Put yourself in their shoes. If someone came to you with a predicament, perhaps because they're suffering with panic attacks, they can't get out the house, maybe they need somebody to talk to, I'm sure we would all be that open ear and would feel honoured and happy that they came to us in the first place. As human beings, we like to feel helpful. It makes us feel good. It's all about choosing the right people at the right time and engaging it in the most comfortable way possible. And that's what I'm hoping to help us all out with in this series. Okay, so how do we initiate this conversation? Number one is to write it down. Write down how you're feeling so it's honest and so you don't miss anything out. It's important not to dismiss anything as silly or unimportant because actually anything and everything that you're going through is valid. Give yourself a lot of time to write this down. Don't do it before bed when you're super, super tired and don't do it when you're having a good day because it probably won't be as authentic. Don't leave anything out, even the most embarrassing things or the things that you really would not be able to tell anybody else write it down in this piece of paper. Or in my case, loads of pieces of paper. Write it down in a language that you can understand. You don't have to use big words. Read it out a couple of times so you don't feel like you've missed anything. Then, with all of this written down, grab a highlighter and begin highlighting all the words or phrases that describe your emotional state really well and truthfully. Then, so that it's easier, grab all of these words and phrases that you've highlighted and put them into really simple bullet points so that it's short, sweet and beautiful about things that aren't so beautiful. Step number two is to tell the person that you'd like to talk to that you'd like to arrange a meeting to see them. So if it's a friend, a family member, a teacher, tell them that you'd love to talk to them about something that you're struggling with and that you think that perhaps they could help. Reassure them though that it's nothing to do with them but that you'd like to confide in them. This way I find approaching the conversation is easier because you've preempted the fact that you're going to talk about something that's not so easy to talk about before you start the conversation and you have time to prepare yourself. I also want to point out this meeting can be face to face, on the phone, on FaceTime, but my advice would be that it's not something that you type because tone of voice cannot be detected when you text somebody or when you message somebody online. And also anticipating their reply can be really scary. Step number three. This is the bit that we're most scared about, I suppose. Well, obviously say hi, ask them how they're doing, ask them about their day, and then say those five magical words. Here's what I prepared earlier. Get out your bullet points and just go through them all. 
don't miss out a detail. Tell them those words and phrases that have come from your heart at that really dark place. If you'd prefer just to read all of your notes out word for word because you'd rather look at the paper than at them, then that's fine. If you'd rather show them and let them read it, provided they can read, I'm sure that will be suitable. I have once actually met a friend who asked to take the bullet point home so they could read it in their own time, should they forget. And that was a really proactive, caring step that I didn't expect them to take. And that made me realise that it's really important to speak to people. Depending on what you want to get out of the conversation as well, let them know whether you'd like them to listen or to give advice. Sometimes we want the other person to try and figure out with us ways to help us. Other times we just want a listening ear or a shoulder to cry on. Either way, there's no rules here. Then, by initiating this conversation with those bullet points, with the person that you feel most easiest to approach, you can then ask them to perhaps come with you and be that support and backup to perhaps engage in conversations with people that you think won't be so easy. And that's it. I say that's it, but it's actually one of the most difficult things I've ever done. But having had those conversations, I can let you know with confidence that it's never as bad as you think it's going to be. These three steps for me, not only prepare yourself, but they prepare the other person for this conversation. In turn, probably making it a little less awkward. I hope any conversations that you have in the future are easier as a result. We can't remove the stigma if we don't talk more, and we can't talk more if we don't know how to do it. If there's any other ways that you think are really helpful, please comment them down below, because we're on this journey together, so the more advice, the merrier. Thank you for joining me. If it's summer where you are, get outside, wear sun cream, and have an amazing week. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Ta-da!